I'm Aisha Cogborn, and I'm here with Dr. Nadia Brown, president and founder of Doyen Leadership Institute. And Dr. Nadia's work focuses on building authentic, confident, strong female leaders. Welcome, Dr. Nadia. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, so glad that you were able to take a moment out of your busy schedule. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Book writing and launches and speaking all over the world to join us. Thank you. Um, actually, it feels good to just breathe and not be in front of a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, anytime we get a chance to to talk, I always enjoy it. So we just we're just gonna let some folks eavesdrop on our conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've had a, a really robust career. You've worked in several different industries, mm -hmm. worked for several different companies, and some of those experiences were wonderful. Some of them, you know weren't so wonderful. Just be honest. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about a time in your career where you know you just step back and realize, I don't know if this is going the way that I want it to go. I was about five years into my career and I was assigned a new project. And frankly, I believe partly because no one else wanted this project. Um, as I'm working to get everything accomplished for this project and get things done, I'm starting to run into major roadblocks. I'm not getting access to resources. Um, people aren't cooperating. They're not getting me the information I need in a timely fashion. Just, you know, a number of things that would slow things down and could derail the project. One day, in talking to the leadership, um, he just asked, you know, how are things going? And I shared with him some of the challenges that I was facing. And literally with one phone call, things changed. Suddenly, the people that were giving me a hard time, weren't necessarily being very cooperative, were now bending over backwards to give me the information I needed, the access to anything. Mm -hmm. Things were running smoothly now. And I remember going home and asking my husband this question, how do you win the game if you don't know the rules? Wow. And that's when I realized that there was so much more to my career success than just working hard and having a degree. There was a lot more to it. And through that relationship with my leadership and a more informal mentor type role, I began to get a sneak peek behind the curtain, if you will, about just some of the different inner workings that happen behind the scenes that you really don't know are taking place. Mm -hmm. So as you continue to develop that mentoring relationship with this leader, and he you know, lets you behind the curtain, Tell us some of the things that you saw changing in your career. Well, shortly um, after that, I went to a different organization, and not only a different organization, different industry, but this time I went in with both eyes wide open. And I knew that going in and learning my job was a big piece of it and doing it well. But now if I wanted to excel and move up in this company, I had to play the game and I had to know the rules. And that paid off big. One day I received a phone call for a position that honestly was being created. And they asked if I wanted, or if I were interested in this position. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was going to be a long drawn out process, because given the fact that it was clearly across the country, I had worked with these leaders before, um, ended up not being the case. And because what I didn't realize is while I'm thinking it's going to take all this time, they were actually reaching out to people in my network that I built over the years at that organization, getting the scoops, so to speak. And it was a very smooth process. Um, when I received a call from HR that the job had actually been posted, they were telling me the job is posted, this is the rec number, go apply. And I can remember sitting there going through the motions of a posting for this job thinking, how many people are posting for this position that I now know is mine? I know at this point we're just going through the formalities, getting all the paperwork signed, but this job is mine. And that really, it just opened my eyes to an entirely different world of how easy it really can be to advance your career once you know the rules. Yeah. So there are people out there who are applying for these jobs yes. and thinking, oh, I didn't get it. Let me go get a new certification. Yes. Let me go get another degree. Yes. And so you're telling me before the job was even formally created, yes. you got a phone call asking you, do you want this job? Yes. Absolutely. 
I got the phone call. Do you want this job? And they were very honest and we're not quite sure what we want this to look like. This is kind of what we're thinking. Um, but we know you can do it. And that wasn't the only time I experienced that. That was the first time, but it continued to happen. I remember another time I received a phone call about a position during, you know, one of those shaky times with take or acquisitions and all that really uneasiness. And he basically said, here's a position. And based on what your management has shared and your, you know, people in your network, I know you can do this job. They said that you can do just about anything to maybe walk on water, part the Red <laughs> Sea, but you can do it. And all you have to do is say the word. And that's it. It was just that easy. There was no looking through job postings or anything like that. It was just say the word, simply say the word. And we're not talking about low, are we talking about really exciting jobs, jobs that call positions and opportunities that call you to pause and like, hmm, <laughs> I really need to think about this. Yeah. And when this continued to happen, I was just, it just, yeah, you just feel like you've just been open to an entirely different world of opportunity of career advancement advancement but it really can be that easy and it just takes away the stress and the frustration of having to pose continually one job after another and it just accelerates your career so fast yeah one of the things that that you focus on and i mentioned this at, at the top um, of our conversation is building authentic women leaders yes what has that really meant for you in your career? It has meant getting to know me. And when I think back to my childhood, I was a lot more talkative, energetic, doing different things. But over the years, I started to, to conform. Mm. But that started to not sit well with my soul. <laughs> so, and, uh, I would be in organizations and you know how it is when you just feel that you're not being yourself yeah. and it's very frustrating to you and but however it also creates a block for you to build different relationships and I kept thinking that if I just get with the right organization mm -hmm. not thinking that if I just get right with me if I first figure out who I am mm -hmm. and own who I am and, and become comfortable with all my quirkiness, that that's where I needed to start. Yeah. But once I did that and I owned it, then I began to see things differently. And even that same organization during the same time as I'm dealing with this project, one of the things that I did was I cut all my hair off. Yeah. And as an African-American woman, cutting off your hair in corporate America can be quite daunting. <laughs> and we've had many, numerous articles to perm or not to perm. I mean, that is not a decision to be taken lightly. But through that process, that really just opened my eyes to really owning something, a decision that I made for personal reasons. Yeah. And you would think that something as simple as your hair, which you know, that's not simple. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> as a woman, that is not simple. But just going through that process and really just experiencing that freedom of choice. Mm. It was my hair, I chose to cut it off. I can do what I wanna do. And and it's funny that you think about it because the, all that with the hair was happening as I was learning this whole thing about playing the game. Mm. So the hair ended up being an outward expression of the fact that you were becoming more comfortable of who you were and the value that you had to contribute to the organization. And as other people begin to know that, you weren't so hung up on the image. I, right. I see that so much where people think, well, I have to wear the navy blue or the black tailored suit and I have to dress like this and I can't wear the, because they think that it all just hinges on what people think of them on the outside. Absolutely. And then a big, and another piece to that is being so focused on the glass ceiling or all the isms, the racism, the sexism, the ageism, the ism, ism, because that's external to me. Mm -hmm. But going through that process and seeing that, you know, I just changed my hair in a big way and that had absolutely no effect on my performance or the way people approached me or dealt with me. That made me really, you know, be, go further into introspection in, I need to deal with me first. Yeah. And that was a very key point and turning point in my career as well is owning the fact that 
I am who I am. This is my personality. Stop trying to conform. I would have conversations with, why can't I just be like everyone else? Why do I always want more? Why can't I just come to work and fit in or be happy? Because that's not me. It's not my personality. I need the challenge. And once I embraced that, things started to shift. Wow. So you embraced that. Things started to shift. You learned the rules to the game. You played by them. You won. Yes. And then you decided... I want to go play a different game. <laughs> <laughs> because, of course, I couldn't just be happy when now I was like, oh, I mastered that game, now I'm off to do another game. <laughs> but another piece to that, a bigger piece, is I see so many women, whether it's in my personal relationships, my research, working with women in my business, that are experiencing the same thing. They feel that I'm being held back because I'm a black woman, mm -hmm. or I could never do that um, because I don't have a degree. Uh, you know, the, the glass ceiling, when I ask that question, how many of you feel that like the glass ceiling is impacting your career? Almost every hand will go up. Mm -hmm. A big piece of that is you. And again, I'm not saying that the other obstacles aren't there, but not only do you need to know the rules of the game, you have to be committed to play the game. Yeah. And that was a key piece for me is I was determined to win. And I want to help other women realize that once you become clear on who you are and you commit to that vision, you can have the same level of success and it doesn't have to be as hard as a lot of people make it seem to be. Yeah. So with Joy and Leadership Institute, um, you're helping women to discover who they are, discover what they want, and what else? to become authentic, confident, and strong leaders. You don't have to be like a man. You don't have to try to talk like a man, walk like a man, look like a man. And a big part of my career was spent in male-dominated industries. So I know what it, some of the challenges of, oh, I think I have to sit this way or talk this way. No. Yeah. You have to be you. And learning that is just so freeing. And being yourself, and I remember a time in a career, or a position I should say, where I actually received the projects and was able to do different things because I was who I was. Mm. I was gregarious Nadia. Yeah. And I was able to work with both sides in, by allowing my personality to show and taking charge of my career and being very pointed and I want to do this and I want to do that and not taking no for an answer really paid off big for me and in that organization when I realized my boss flat out told me that he was not going to promote me because where I was made his job easier <laughs> yes he had no qualms and look at me straight in the eye and saying that to me yeah and I was like oh really okay <laughs> It's time to now devise a different plan. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, it's facing that fear of change because, you know, I have my friends, we do this every week or every day, but I knew that that wasn't going to sit well with me for very long. Mm -hmm. And I just had the gumption to say, okay, you know what? That's fine. I'll take my toys and I will go play at a different playground <laughs> um, because I wanted to continue to grow and advance. Yeah. Yeah. So for women who are watching out there, who feel like they're dealing with a glass ceiling, whether it's internal or external. How can they engage with you to begin to dismantle that glass ceiling? One of the things that I offer is a monthly webinar where we talk about a different leadership topic, things such as leading like a lady, um, shatter the ceiling, crush the lie, you know, Things that really matter when it comes to being able to communicate, be taken seriously in the office, and things that I'm really passionate about, but encouraging women to play the game. Jump in there and accept the fact that it is a game. And I understand the first time I heard that, I was upset. I mean, serious attitude. This is not a game. You are tripping when you're talking about it's a game. This is my life. I didn't go to college all these years to, you know, 
to talk about, I'm coming to play a game. I'm coming to work. But it is a game. And learning that and being confident enough to step in the room and play full out to get the career success that you want is so worth it. And that's what I work with women to do at Doyen. Excellent. Well, I tell you, ladies, I can personally vouch for Dr. Nadia. She knows her stuff. So if you're feeling like you are not where you want to be in your career, no more excuses. It's time to play the game. So if you don't know the rules, then you need to connect with Dr. Nadia. You need to connect with Doyen Leadership Institute so that you can learn the rules and you can play the game and you can see the, the benefits of winning. When you know better, you do better. And when you work with Dr. Nadia, you will know better. Absolutely. So thank you, Dr. Nadia, for thank joining you. us today. And until next time, have a wonderful week on purpose.